Common Man at Torque, Mike Riccardotti, Scott Torgerson. Mike's on vacation. Craig Krenzel filling in. Joined now by NFL guru, the professor, John Clayton. John, thanks for your time, man. We appreciate it. Porgy, it's been so long. I haven't talked to you in a while. What have you been up to? Well, uh, Carson Palmer and Bengals talk. I mean, this is this. They're a great story here with Carson Palmer. Carson Palmer gets traded to the Raiders for a first and second round pick. I never thought it would happen, and I never thought Mike Brown would cave in this. Are you surprised the Bengals got that much from the Oakland Raiders? Oh, absolutely. I mean, let's put it this way: you know, it wasn't in the plans because they were cruising along on a four and two start. They had Jason Campbell at quarterback, and then Pop goes to collarbone, and then. Up goes the offer because they were, you know, they call around and they see how desperate it was where, you know, Kyle Bowler was their basically best option if they didn't make some kind of move. Uh, they, they knew that David Garrard, once they called, was going to have back surgery. They, uh, they weren't as sold on maybe making a move on Kyle Orton, even though that would have been cheaper. But Hugh Jackson knew Carson Palmer from USC and Cincinnati, and so consequently was able to at least uh, make him an offer that he couldn't refuse. And listen, if you're Mike Brown, this is still a win-win because, I mean, he still wins on principle because he says, I'm not going to trade you. But also, too, now he can go to anybody that walks into his office and say, I want to be traded. And they say, fine, give me for two first round picks and I'll consider it. So at least he was able to win on principle and I think have a win-win for the Cincinnati Bengals organization. You know, I'm not a big fan of Carson for what he did because unlike Takeo Spikes and Corey Dillon, it wasn't a pay thing. It was just I didn't want to play there. And he was paid a lot of money. He knew what he was getting into. But that being said, the last couple years on the field, and I'm not going to say Carson Palmer was bad, but he just wasn't good. You saw last year him throwing into triple coverage, trying to get the ball to T.O. at times. He had the, the elbow problem, but he just became a very average quarterback. But taking that, he knows Hugh Jackson. He's in a different environment. Uh, he actually knows Hugh from back in the USC days. Do you think Carson Palmer can kind of resurrect his career a little bit? He could. I think it's just going to be depending, and I think we'll get a gauge of this on Sunday, how he throws the football. Because, I mean, you look at his numbers now, how much of that goes to the receiving talent there in uh, Cincinnati or how much does that go on him. But, you know, clearly the look of him was not the look of pre-injury Carson Palmer. I mean, pre-injury Carson Palmer is 4,000 yards. It's a uh, 7.3 yard per attempt. It's a uh, 26 touchdowns a season. I mean, that's what you get when you get the real Carson Palmer. What you got the last couple of years was a quarterback that was getting 6.7 yards an attempt. You got 61 percent completions, and then you're not you know you're barely getting to 4,000. And so you have to throw way too many passes and get too many interceptions to be able to do that. So you know if there is a decline in his skills, and somebody brought up a great point. I mean, they they thought that maybe what you're looking at, you're not getting like Drew Bledsoe. Although I think Carson may have been a little bit better than Drew Bledsoe when he was at New England, you're getting a you're getting a Drew Bledsoe when he was in Buffalo and Dallas. And if that's the case, you know that's a big price to pay if you're the if you're the Oakland Raiders. ESPN's John Clayton joins us here on ninety seven point one The Fan. So this week, John John Carson Palmer is going to start. Would you go with a Carson Palmer who knows maybe twenty five percent of the offense, or a Kyle Bowler who knows all the offense? Uh, you go with Carson Palmer if he knows 10% of the offense. Because <laughs> you can still probably win the game with Kyle Bowler, but you know first off, he, you, Carson's going to be in uniform. I mean, there's no other option. Terrell Pryor is uh, still on scholarship. I mean, he's going to be the third quarterback, but he's not ready to do anything. You have no other backup quarterback, and so Carson's going to be in uniform. If he's going to be in uniform, put him out there. And you know What I think is going to be interesting to see is that you put him out there like he was used in Cincinnati. You know, Let him do some know-how to let him control the play calling you know that we don't know how different the numbering system is you know than now the fact that al saunders is uh, doing a lot of the play calling the numbering system could be different than what he's used to but if you go no huddle it's you know simple calls i mean just go on the a little card that's kind of wrapped around your wrist you look at it and you make you know get the suggestions from al saunders and then you make the calls at the line of scrimmage i think that would be the easier way to do it but uh I think that there's no question. I mean, you can go with Kyle Bowler and potentially lose the Kansas City game, but if you go with Carson Palmer, he's your quarterback for the rest of the season. Do it. Our Bengals 4-2, and two are, and I think Andy Dalton's been good. He's not afraid to make a mistake, and he hasn't been great the entire time, but you're finally getting something from Andre Smith. Ray Maluga in the middle, even though he's hurt right now, has been really good, and that defense you saw last week, John, finally got some turnovers going. Are you buying the Bengals as a maybe 8-8, eight and 9-7 eight, and seven team? Mm, I don't know about 8-8, eight and eight, but I have to think now you look at them at the, uh, probably a 7-win team because I think that you can see with the easy schedule that they have, they're taking advantage and beating the winnable teams. I mean, that was a nice win over Buffalo, but you look and you see, what was it, like 7-16 and 16 are the team's records that they've been able to beat. Well, I mean, 
somebody has to win those games, and they're winning them. I mean, one of the reasons that the defense, aside from the fact they're reasonably good, is uh, number two in the league, is look at the quarterbacks they're playing. Now, they played Ryan Fitzpatrick, but when you play the Blaine Gabbert, you're playing quarterbacks from the uh, NFC West. I mean, you're going to be able to, like all teams in this division, be able to take advantage of the defensive stats. I mean, you notice the top seven uh, of the top seven defenses, four of them are in this division. Is that because they're that good? Well, in part in Baltimore and in part in Pittsburgh, yes, but a lot of that has to do with the quarterbacks that they're playing. I mean, they're playing some of the youngest and some of the worst quarterbacks in football. That helps out the defensive stats. ESPN's John Clayton joins us on 97.1 The Fan. wanted to ask you about the Browns and Peyton Hillis, and he's kind of iffy for this weekend, but it's just kind of been a strange ride. The strep throw, the agent coming out saying, I told him not to play, and then Peyton hits Twitter and doing the interview circuit, and it's just been it's just been really weird. How do you see this thing with Peyton Hill is shaking out? Do you think he gets a new deal from the Browns? I think so. I mean, you know, he may not be able to get the amount of money that I'm sure he's hoping for, but how often do you are you able to do that? So uh, I would have to think, and I know Mike Holmgren came out much earlier today and started talking about it and said that we are trying to work a deal for a Peyton Hillis. But now here's the question. You know, there's a big discrepancy, and this is a problem for all running backs. You know, you've got Chris Johnson at $13 million, Ahmad Bradshaw at $4.5 million. Where in between <laughs> that do you take it? And if you're Peyton Hillis, can you be satisfied at 5 or $6 million? If he is, I think he can get a quick deal. But if he's going to shoot for the gold and try to get 7 or 8 or 9, then I think he's going to have a problem. So I think that if he takes a number closer to Ahmad Bradshaw, he's going to be signed now for the rest of his career in Cleveland. And I think that's a good fit. And I think it would take away a lot of the uncertainty because I think that uh, you know he definitely is affected by uh, lacking a contract. I mean, you see Matt Forte going through the same thing. And you saw Frank Gore go through the same thing before he got his contract. So I think if he's willing to take a little bit less, then he'll get a deal. Uh, John, watch it, Colt McCoy, and I don't think he's bad at all, and I think he's been better than what I thought, but he doesn't have weapons at wide out. I don't know how he's improving or not. What do you make of Colt McCoy? I mean, I guess the rest of the season is going to tell, though, right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, I think in some ways he's taken a little bit of a step back because some of his accuracy seems to be gone. He's now down to 55%, but again, so much of that still has to go to the uh, talent around him, and there's not a lot of playmakers. I think it was interesting and probably wise that they put Greg Little in the mix uh, after the bye week and give him a start because I think he's you know got speed speed that they really haven't had since they drafted Massaquay and they drafted Brian Robisky. So I think that helps them out. I think they need to get Evan Moore a lot more involved in the offense. Offense. And maybe the fact that they have you know issues right now with the injuries at running back because I don't anticipate Peyton playing this week. You know he's the seventh running back that's had a hamstring issue, and all say the previous six always missed that first week. So if that's the case, I think he's probably not going to play this week. So I think if they get everything settled, they have a chance to be all right. But you know Colt right now is not taking that next step forward. But that's okay. He's still young, and I think he's still shown some promise. Hey, uh, John, I just want to ask you one more about the league in general and about the Broncos with Tim Tebow making his first start. Now, I think if he runs the same plays Kyle Orton did, I think he's in trouble because he's just not a quarterback like that or like anyone in the league. How are the Broncos going to use him to bring out the best in Tim Tebow? Well, first, I mean, I think he feels more natural in shotgun. He feels more natural throwing on the run. Uh, the things that he's not good at is sitting in the pocket and trying to be an accurate passer. I mean, if you watch him throw a five-yard flare pass, I mean, that thing may bounce three times before it gets to the running back. I mean, there's certain throws that he makes that are just not good, and he still stares down wide receivers. And that's why I think to a certain degree running around may give him a better chance of trying to do it. I mean, they're going to have to be a running offense. They traded away their most talented wide receiver this week, Brandon Lloyd. I still think that uh, – I, 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 well, I know this. I mean – in the minds of the coaches, in the minds of John Elway, in the minds of people in the organization, they think he's the third best quarterback. But they also realize that Kyle Orton had kind of lost a lot of the, you know, lost a lot of the, not the locker room, but I think all the fan base because they've been so average the last couple of weeks, the games that he's played. So it, this was time to go to him, but I don't know if it's going to be a success. Well, John, I always uh, love your work. Follow you on Twitter, and, and folks, John's uh, been on Twitter too, so you can follow him. You do a great job. I always appreciate you coming on, man. Hey, but long time no here. It's good.